Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Board Game Curator. And today we're going to be looking at some Shaper games. Except, they're not really Shaper games. It's actually pronounced Shopper. And it was enough of a problem for them that they actually started putting on the boxes how to pronounce their name. But, even throughout all this time, they're better known as Shaper. Making games made by Shopper, the Cootie Company. Shaper Manufacturing was founded in 1949 and would later evolve into Shaper Toys by the 70s, who produced a large number of the iconic children's games that we love and know today, until eventually selling to Tyco Toys in the 80s. William Shaper began with molding homemade fishing lures out of plastic and gradually adding pieces made a game out of it based on pen and paper games of the 20s, thus designing Cootie, the best known children's game by Shaper. It's still pronounced today. While most younger children's games of the 40s and 50s were paper and cardboard, Shaper was one of the first to predominantly use plastics for their toys and games. And it became quite popular and successful, using a new medium but still keeping costs low. Many games, even branding themselves with the Cootie Company to capitalize on the quick rising popularity of Shopper Games and Toys. So now let's take a look at some of their actual games. A number of the Shopper Games came in a distinct packaging style, which some call the unique popcorn or carnival style boxes. They usually had cords on the lid and colorful tops. These boxes came in a number of different color schemes and were used more frequently later on in the 60s and 70s. And some of their popular early games were often reprinted in these boxes due to their popularity. And of some of these games, first up, we have Wing It from 1971, which was a carnival style shooting range game that you could play in your own home. It was pretty popular despite the shooters packing a bit of punch for a little kid's toy. Another pretty well-known game is Don't Spill the Beans, originally released in 1957. It's a well-known classic where you take turns placing beans on a little balancing pot, trying not to tip it over. Older versions, like this one, actually came with red kidney beans in the pot as their playing pieces. Next up, we've got Don't Go Overboard from 1971. It's a simple game mixing memory and dexterity where players take turns placing the little sailors on a little plastic boat. But the sailors have magnets in them in both orientations, meaning some sailors will attract each other and stay safe, while others are going to repel each other and push the players overboard. Ants in the Pants is another very popular one that's still produced today by a bunch of different companies from 1969, where players simultaneously press down on little plastic ants, causing them to pop up in the air to get in the pants bowl. There's a lot of different variations of this, and it's something that you can play easily with these little plastic frogs that you get at the Dollar Tree. And some games didn't have the cord and the removable lid, but still copied that iconic look of the popcorn-style boxes. For example, this is Billy Goat from 1973, where players are going to take turns stacking these cinder spot type bricks on a platform, trying not to let the weight push the rubber bands down and send the Billy Goat flying. But not all Shaper games came in this style packaging. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. First up is Casper from 1974. It was a cute glow-in-the-dark game that you could play at sleepovers. Players would try to win or lose chips by placing the Casper light on one of the plastic pedestals with holes of varying depths that may or may not cause the light in them to turn on. Next up is Bango Bango from 1965. It was a cute tactile game that probably drove parents nuts from the noise and children's nuts from the difficulty. Players would simultaneously be smacking the sides 
of this thing, trying to get a marble to roll up the ramp at just the right amount of force. Next up we got Cootie from 1949, the original shopper game. A simple game of taking turns rolling a die and adding the corresponding pieces to your cootie bug, racing to see who can complete theirs first. This one's definitely endured over the years, with over 50 different versions being produced around the world by 30 different companies and in a multitude of different languages. Next up, we've got Tickle Bee from 1956. A game you could take with you and a game you could play solo. You'd use a magnetic wine to guide the little bee through the maze as quickly as possible, trying not to get too close and letting him touch the wand through the plastic, which would result in moving the ball and getting stung. Next up we got another classic, Stadium Checkers from 1952. In Stadium Checkers, players take turns designating a well or a marble and then turning a ring until that marble moves or the well changes, depending on what you picked. Get all your marbles out through the holes at the bottom to win. This one's a bit enduring and is still produced today, with some companies adding color requirements to the center holes, or more rings, such as the original pattern. Next up, we got Shifty Gear from 1962. This one, players are going to take turn rolling a die and placing the corresponding size gear on the pegboard, trying to get gears so you can spin and get your little flag to come out. This one's actually pretty hard for a kid's game. Next up we got Pull the Rug Out from 1968. This is a pretty cute one where players take turns pushing their luck, spinning the spinner and putting various plastic objects in a stack on a small vinyl rug and trying to pull them out without toppling the stack over. Kinda like the tablecloth magic trick. This is also a good one to note that Shaper printed most of their plastic pieces in a bunch of different colors. So, any piece that came in a game might come in one of the different colors that any of the other pieces would come in. So there was always a little bit of an aftermarket for some of these games where player people would trade pieces for their games to get their favorite pieces in their favorite colors. Next up we've got Mill. Mill's been produced multiple times during Shopper's Lifetime in a bunch of distinct different styles. It's a common name for Nine Men's Morris, which is a classic game. Players are going to take turns placing pieces on a grid, trying to get three in a row to be able to remove an opponent's piece. In this game, for some reason, Shopper chose to make the pieces look like men in old-timey pajamas. Next up, we got Jack and the Beanstalk from 1965. This is a pretty cute one, where players would load these leaves into the beanstalk and take turns pulling out, trying to get a leaf to match one of the holes to climb up their beanstalk, especially looking for the gold one, which fits any of them, and then being able to press the button at the top to defeat the giant up top. Next up, from 1965, we got Monkeys and Coconuts. Monkeys and Coconuts was a cute little kid's game about rolling and moving across the jungle and following the spaces that they land on, as well as the unique monkey spinner, and would either gain or lose these little plastic coconuts, trying to have the most when they made it through the jungle. Now this is one that they used the not quite paper, but not quite plastic game mats that would definitely deteriorate over time, especially from hot or cold temperatures. Next up we've got another iconic shopper game from 1966. It's the last straw with this two-piece plastic camel and players would take turns putting these sticks of varying sizes and weights in the camel, trying not to let the weight be so much that he can't take it. From 1958 we've got King of the Hill. A unique roll and move going up this uh, plastic mountain trying to avoid the pitfalls that'll send you to different caves across the mountain. And also trying to be lucky enough not just to get to the top, but also to hit the secret switch to make the crown pop up to truly be king of the hill. And this one, instead of a dice, also had this unique 
Plinko style turnover. Last but not least, but my favorite, is Hot Pop from 1968, where each turn players are going to get these special cards, which gives you a permit to try to hunt one of these special big game animals, and you take turns moving in a straight line, and if you have the right card for that animal, you can try to spin your cage until the key opens up and springs your animal trying to catch a midair and catching the most animals to win. Alrighty, well I hope you enjoyed that. That was just some of the Shaper games that I own. Um, and that's just a small sampling of what they had overall. Shopper made over a hundred different games in their lifetime. So there's a lot more out there if you found any of this interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like what you saw, consider leaving a like or a subscribe. But until next time, have a good one.